Mars is pummeled by rocks from space every day, and some are big enough to make a big splash. A recent impact blew out a house-sized crater and hurled debris nearly three kilometers away, and it may have even exposed buried ice. On this episode of Mars Guy, a new paper was published this week that documents recent impacts on Mars big enough to be recorded by the seismometer on the InSight lander. Coincidentally, a tiny impact on Earth went viral last month because it was captured with both video and audio. It certainly wouldn't have been picked up by any seismometers, given its size, but it's interesting to see how similar the aftermath looks to one on Mars that's a thousand times bigger. With the advent of high-resolution cameras in orbit around Mars and the availability of repeat coverage, we have the ability to discover newly formed craters. It takes high resolution because the most frequently occurring impacts are the smallest, so craters just a few meters in diameter are the most common. But the material ejected from a crater can spray out hundreds to thousands of meters. And when that happens in the dustiest places on Mars, that spray of ejecta is much easier to see. That's because the light tone dust typically is covering much darker material underneath, so new impacts appear as dark splotches where the lighter dust is blown away. The old school way of finding new impacts is to manually inspect images from the context camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, but the new paper describes the use of machine learning basically an AI training approach, to identify candidates like this one. Once confirmed, images that predate it are searched for to constrain when the impact happened. So here, the closest image in time comes from the lower-resolution Themis camera, taken on May 25th, 2019. That means this impact occurred sometime between then and December 16th, 2020, the date of this image. For likely candidates, a high-rise image gets targeted to provide confirmation of an impact using the highest resolution camera available. This crater shows a bluish tint in places, which may be due to ice. New impact craters at higher latitudes commonly show exposed ice, which can appear bluish with the color processing of high-rise images. A subsequent image taken more than three years later lacks the bluish tint consistent with the loss of ice due to sublimation. If this is confirmed, it would be the lowest latitude yet observed for exhumed ice at 21.5 degrees north. Another interesting feature of this impact is the evidence for a mock cone. The supersonic entry speed of the meteor appears to have created a pressure wave that lingered long enough in the seconds after the impact to prevent dust on the surface from being blown away preserving the light tone. But then rays of ejecta in what was probably just seconds after that shot past this boundary and scattered surface dust to reveal darker material underneath. It also appears that neither the ejecta nor the pressure waves were sufficient to disturb the sand ripples, which were present before the impact. And with less than 1% the pressure of Earth's atmosphere, there's not much air to carry sound waves effectively, so maybe the blam would be more like this. <laughs> 